my thought for today is something that I'm really a beginner in, and it's just a brief mention of a whole world of a topic. And it's the idea of awareness, consciousness, the senses, and how do we how do we organize them how do we see them how do we see ourselves how do we perceive our being our existence where we where we fit and the idea is that it's so normal for us to uh really just by default see the center of our universe as our heads and you know it, it makes perfect sense you know we have uh you know four out of our five senses uh in terms of external perception are in our head uh so why wouldn't we see that as the center i mean if we're looking at something it's centered on our eyes we're hearing something it's centered on our ears and of course, we have this brain in our heads where all this thinking goes on. And so it's completely understandable to see the head as the center. And it's not entirely false, but it is incomplete. I have absolutely gone down the road of being in my head to an extreme degree. Um, it's very helpful for uh, escapism uh, to sort of concoct fantasy imagination in our minds and separate from uh, our real surroundings. Um, and I've always enjoyed being highly cerebral, uh, often to ex extreme degrees, Almost like the the alien head uh, in in a in a vat, uh, just sort of a just sort of a discombobulated, uh, dis, you know, disembodied head, uh, just a pure brain. Uh, you know, there's there's something about that that's attractive to me, and certainly when I was younger, uh, this kind of pure cerebra, pure cerebralness. Uh, is something that I've gone very far into. But I've also paid the price for that in the neglect of my body, in the, uh, the almost like a tyranny of being overly cerebral where like, our thoughts become tyrants over ourselves, um, trying to make the world the way that we want it, make reality the way that we imagine it, uh, even flying in the face of what the world is actually telling us and what our, our bodies are telling us, uh, living in this concocted, convoluted thought world. And that is the extreme of this kind of head consciousness where we focus our consciousness in our head, in our brain, in our thoughts. And, you know, when somebody is, you know, has no brain, you know, it's not, it's not like, it's not like this is all a bad thing. It's not all bad. It's, it's just the extreme of it. And the idea that this is the only way that is the mistake that I have fallen into. Uh, and I'm recently becoming more open uh, to alternative ways of kind of centering our perception. Uh, I was fascinated to hear of uh, this idea that it's possible to imagine your gut uh, as being the center. Uh, and we have that in the sense of feeling your gut, you get a gut feeling. And, you know, I imagine, you know, maybe for, uh, for many people, this is uh, natural. And certainly the heart, we, we can have a sort of a heart center 
uh, if we sort of the, the feelings coming from our chest and from our heart are we sort of feel like the center of our being. And maybe some of this is completely obvious uh, to many to many listeners um, because it's just uh, and maybe it's just for me uh, that my uh, living in the head uh, has gone this far. But I know I'm not the only one uh, who has this propensity to live in the head. So much of our environment conditions us to that. All this uh, kind of mentally based labor, we're often removed from physical labor. Uh, we're living in chairs and watching screens. And that is highly, highly mental brain head activity. And we're being very highly stimulated. We're just, it just seems to be part of the default state of the modern person is just this hyper stimulation that is filling our senses, filling our minds, uh, pictures, words, sounds, and it's keeping us focused in the head. And so much of all the movements and programs and therapies and ideas that are trying to help with the problems of this, of this over, this, this living in the head, which has spawned whole, whole, whole worlds, whole movements, whole systems, all devoted to how do we get out of our head? And it seems like a big part of that is if we cut down on the stimulation, if we have this silence and this space, we can then actually have feelings uh, from our body and actually let this sort of internal sense speak to us. It's like, our body, our hearts, our guts can, and our, our bodies can, can be speaking to us and they are communicating subtle senses to us all the time. Uh, but because we are so, uh, so distracted, focused on, uh, or in, entranced by these mental stimuli, uh, all the words and sounds and pictures and everything that's that's coming at us, we tune out of the body. So this is simply the beginning of moving in this direction. And it's just, it's, it, it's, it's simply noticing. I'm, I'm just noticing how big a thing this is. I don't actually have uh, a solution for this. Uh, but for my first step, I will, I will, well, there's the continuing, the continuing search for more silence, the, the continuing pursuit of simplicity uh, to leave more room for this and simply the feeling of letting myself have the feeling of just, just reminding myself that I have a body. <laughs> yeah. May, maybe that is just uh, something as simple as that can be highly powerful. Let's just remember, remind ourselves, Hey, I have a body and simply feel the body. And as obvious as that is, I bet it's not something many of us will regularly think about if we're living up in the world of the head. So as somebody who has uh, had an extreme case of living in the brain, um, I now undertake to see what can be done 
to simply let the center of my consciousness be my heart, my gut, my body, let the brain move to the side. So the brain, as important as it is, let the brain not be the center of the universe. Let's let our body be the center of the universe, of our personal universe, of our, of our consciousness. Let the body be the center. Imagine what life is like from that perspective.